Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another episode of the show. So it's the episode you've all been waiting for. Well, maybe not. It's the episode I've been waiting for. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the Empathy Rosé. Um, this is actually the third take of the intro. And uh, the first take, I went on a little bit of a rant of what's been going on in our country, in the world. And I'll try to make it short. Just, you know what? Right here. This is what we need. This is what we need, right? Absolutely. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm sickened by what I've seen um, the last couple months. And uh, yeah, we just, uh, yeah. Anyway, empathy for each other. So, uh, Gary, you you aptly named, you, you're really, I don't know, precognizant, prescient, prescient, I think that's the word, prescient, uh, that we need some empathy. And you figured this out a year and a, probably two or three years ago when you decided to come up with this. But all right. So what is this wine? Uh, so a little backstory on empathy. So I think it was March. I had it in March because, yeah. So back in March sometime, I was trying to contact Gary, say, hey, let's do a Skype interview. I got the rosé or maybe the rosé was on the way. I can't remember. Um, so let's do a Skype interview and be great. We can do taste the wine and blah, blah, blah. And no reply, which honestly that's normal because Gary probably gets like 10,000 emails a day and it's probably filtered out and he probably has assistants that go, well, this guy's not important and this guy's not important. Oh, this guy is important because Gary needs to do business with him. So, you know, I'm, I'm definitely a, a triple Z, triple Z lister when it comes to Gary Vaynerchuk's world uh, and most people's worlds to be really honest. Um, anyway, uh, I also reached out to Empathy Wines um, through their website and I mean through Instagram and you know I put posts like we need to do this and nah, nah. so I finally got an email reply back from John Troutman and um, he was like yeah let's um, you know say yeah let's do let's do a video interview you know Gary's schedule is a little bit you know a little bit uh, hectic for him. This is back in March. So things were getting crazy at that point with COVID, but we hadn't really gotten full born to craziness. And he was like, Hey, let's set up for April 1st. I'm like, cool. Um, I think it was April 1st. Let me double. No, it's May 1st, May 1st. So this is April. Yeah. He said April 1st, but he meant May 1st. And I was like, all right, yeah, we can do, we can do that. We can do that day. I'm off from my day job. Let's do it. I think uh, around, right before that time, I, I sent a reminder, said, hey, don't forget, and then nothing. And then I get an email. It's like, oh, man, so sorry. Your email got sent to the wrong. Like, it was like the info email wasn't like his direct email. I was like, all right, cool, man. Let's set up for like the next week or a few days later. Pick a date. I'm off this time. Cool. Yes, let's do it. He said yes. And I think I know I sent at least one reminder. I don't remember if I sent a second reminder, but... I, it was the morning, it was going to be a morning interview. I was ready to go. I didn't have everything quite set up, but the set's kind of permanently set up right now. All I had to do is just kind of plug in the stuff I needed to plug in. I'd be ready to go in five minutes. Silence, nothing. And uh, so that was about mid-April. No, that, I think it was like closer to May um, that that was supposed to happen. And uh, yeah, so nothing, right? And I even reached out to Gary about something else and said, oh, by the way, you know, this is what happened. Nothing. So John, um, I'm sure something like I'm sure something happened. But like I just already mentioned, I'm like a triple Z lister. So and I'm not I'm not trying to make you guys feel bad that, you know, I'm not important because I know everybody's important. But when it comes to the world of wine reviewers, yeah, I'm I'm not in the A list people. All right. So with all that said. 
I'm predisposed to like these wines because I'm a huge fan of Gary. I mean, I do know Gary. We're not like tight. I don't like have his real phone number on speed dial, just that other phone number that he sends a bunch of texts out that you can text him back, but he's never texted me back. But anyway, I know somebody else who has one of those and that person's also never texted me back, but she claims that to everybody else that's, you know, that's her number, but um, that's okay. Again, I'm a Z lister, triple Z lister. Um, but uh, I know I'm, I'm being really sarcastic and I'm, I probably should lighten up a little bit right now. Um, but anyway, uh, but I mean, Gary doesn't know who I am. I mean, it's not like, it's not like, you know, I'm completely off his radar, but I like all the stuff he does. Um, I like the wines he's done, he's done in the past. I liked the Chardonnay, so I'm predisposed to like this wine. All right, so I paid with shipping and tax. I think it came out to $27 a bottle. So when you go to the website right now, it's $20 a bottle, and I think it comes out to about probably 27 ish I don't know for sure because, you know, I was signed up on one subscription model. I think they changed it, but I don't know if I got moved to the new subscription model or whatever, but I did cancel my subscription. Now, let me explain why. It's not because I don't like the wines. Granted, I've only had one of the wines. I like the Chardonnay. I still have one more bottle left. Um, I just don't need a subscription model to any wine club. I mean, I did uh, the Wall Street Journal thing for a very short period of time, and they send you a bunch of different wines, but eh, I wasn't feeling those wines. And just in general, I mean, I like Gary stuff. Like, you know, but for me, you know, it comes out to about, yeah, it comes out to almost like 70 or 80 bucks because it's, I did have to pay for shipping. Now, I th I mean, anyway, I know it's only three times a year, every four months, but I got to cut back. So um, I want to be able to spend my money on multiple wines from multiple parts of the world and not be locked into nine wines a year from the same producer it has nothing to do with any particular it, it, it could be it could be silver oak it could be you know Concio Toro, um it could be Castle del diablo whatever you know Castiello del diablo i mean we're talking it can be from a ten dollar bottle of wine to a hundred and fifty dollar bottle of wine it doesn't matter i don't like i'm not locked into subscription models all right so it's just not how i drink wine Lots of people drink wine that way, and that's totally cool. But my goal is to drink as many wines from around the world as possible, especially because I have a review show. Like, why would I? Yeah. Anyway, so this wine, 2019, uh, you can see it. I don't need to put, I mean, I can put it up there, um, but you can easily see it from here. So 2019, it is a blend. And um, so on this card, you get three cards or four cards, three, four cards, whatever, with each shipment. You know, it has uh, a farmer card, and on the back of the farmer, it has the farmers. They use three different farmers for their wines, and for the rosé, they have two farmers. But on the farmer cards, where they show you what's the blend, they don't show you the blends on the website. So I don't know if the vintages are different blends. It doesn't give the percentages, but it tells you at least the grapes. So um, if I had thrown the card out, I wouldn't know what the blend is, because it's, it's not on the label, and it's not on the website. Guys, put it on the label, put it on the website, because I may not hold on to this card, you know, three, four weeks later, three months, four months later, right? All right. Um, anyway, so it is Syrah, Grenache, Pinot Noir, and Barbera. That is a really cool combination of grapes. All right, so who, oh, I'm sorry, there's four farmers on this card. There's two different farmers, Marcus uh, Bokish, or Bokish, and Clay Shannon. So Marcus is from Lodi, and Clay is from Lake County. And uh, so they are the farmers behind the rosé. And so really cool. And then uh, you get tasting notes, but I don't read those. And then um, there's the three founders. You have John, Nate, and Gary. So, uh, so yeah, so let's get into the wine. Let's take a little sip of water. I had to make sure I swapped out the teal cup bottle for the silver gray one. Otherwise, the, the teal bottle will probably disappear. All right, so let's do it. I'm excited. I was going to have to put a new capsule in. I've been using this Corbin a lot um, over the past couple weeks and going through a lot of gas. I have no idea where I'm at on this, on this um, cartridge, but I figured I'd at least get through this wine. 
All right. Wow, smells good. Okay. Hey, have you watched my behind behind the scenes shows yet? You should. If you're into like how to produce video, you should. I only had four videos so far, but right after I do all these wine videos, I got at least two or three more videos I'll be posting. Well, in every week, you know. So I've got I'll be doing about two or three more weeks of uh, content here after I do all the wines, which is probably going to be about a month and a half's worth of content. All right. So I shouldn't have I should have been swirling during that because you know you want to not swirl first, let you know let the aromatics settle in the glass, let them build up because when you swirl there's some esters that kind of get you know thrown off and there's some those are some of the some of those are important aromas when you're blind tasting, so yeah so let things calm down take a little sniff 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 or as Gary say sniffy sniff. So right off the bat, it's, you know, the typical rosé um, aromas, uh, strawberry, uh, watermelon, and, uh, but now there's, there's also a little bit of cranberry, uh, a little bit of red apple. There's some uh, apple skins, some red flowers, pink flowers, white flowers. It's, it, but it's like a combination of those flowers, but it's not prominent. It's just like there's this really, really light floral aspect to it. It smells clean. It smells like wet rock, mineral. Um, I mean, it smells like a clean wine because we want your rosés to be kind of a clean rosé. You don't really want this overly oaky and extracted thing. I mean, rosé is supposed to be a lighter wine. So on the palate, those fruits definitely come through. So on the nose, I didn't really talk about condition of fruit, but there is a ripeness to it, not an overripe, not really underripe, not really tart. The fruit has a little bit of tartness to it. Not a lot, but it's a little bit of tartness. Um, again, watermelon to me is kind of the kind of the um, overriding flavor. Um, it's almost like those those candy, you know, like those little watermelon candies. So it's not a it's not a sweet watermelon. Not like you bit into a watermelon and saw all that sugary sweetness, but there's a candy confectionery type of thing to it, like a hard candy. Um, you know, kind of brings you back to your childhood, like Jolly Rancher watermelon thing, or like those those long sticks, you know, watermelon things. So pleasant memories of that. Strawberry, little red apple, some of the apple skin's still there. Um, the floral isn't as prominent on the nose. I mean, on the palate, it wasn't the nose, and it wasn't even prominent on the nose. It was just kind of like that hint. So on the palate, it's really a fruit-driven thing, but there's a good freshness and a good crispness, a.k.a. acidity. All right, so real quick. So those grapes that are being used, and I'm going to remind myself what the grapes are. So Syrah, Grenache, Pinot Noir, Barbera. Pinot Noir, higher acid grape. Grenache, a higher acid grape. Syrah, not necessarily a high acid grape, but it's not really a low acid grape. Um, and Barbera, you know, I don't, <clears throat> I don't drink a lot of Barbera, but my memory is Barbera is also a little bit elevated in this acidity. Maybe not high acid as far as red wines are concerned or red grapes are concerned, but you know, an elevated, an elevated acidity to it. And there's a crispness to it, a refreshness to it. Um, is it a $20 bottle of wine? Yeah, it's a $20 rosé. Um, there's there's a complexity to it. There's, um, I don't want to put richness because richness implies a broadness and like a full-bodiedness. I mean, it's a lighter wine. It's absolutely what a rosé needs to be. I mean, the aromas are really starting to kind of kind of blossom a little bit not to keep the floral thing going but you know I feel like I even get some like mandarin orange in there I mean it's a really nice wine like I could totally crush this like I could like just pound the bottle 
pull the cork out and just drink from the bottle. That's how it, it smells great. And I guess it's a little bit of cork. And it tastes really good. And you know what the other thing is? I've been having a lot of either drinking or tasting a lot of French rosés. And nothing about French rosés. But it's not a French rosé. And I'm happy it's not a French rosé. It tastes really good. And it's different. Um, and I like different. Because I'm different. You're different too. So, um, And so are you. And so are you. Okay? And everybody. But, uh, and, and that's what's so cool about all of us. And if we could get over that part and realize that we're all the same at the same time, maybe we can get along. All right. So, um, and have some empathy for each other. All right. So, yeah, um, get the wine. You know, if you're, if you like subscription models, now, granted, you can buy individual bottles, which I think is great. I didn't realize that until tonight that they switched to being subscription or buy single bottles. Um, so that I might in the future you know, uh, say, hey, I feel like having another bottle of one of these things, but you definitely have to pay for some shipping. So at that point, it starts becoming closer to like a $30 bottle of wine, maybe even 35 bucks when you add tax and all that. And I'm not saying this is not worth it, you know, because you're like, oh, it's a $20 bottle of wine, but then the shipping's like half, half of the cost of the wine plus tax. That's the biggest problem with shipping and wine is, is the shipping because they, they, they've got to, they can't give it to you for free necessarily. So they either free shipping and jack up the price of the wine, and then if you go to a retail shop, you pay less, or they make it the same price, and they're making even more profit than they really should. Or it's, this is the retail price. If you went to a shop, you'd pay 20 bucks. If you want it shipped, and you're only getting one bottle, well, we're going to have to charge you more. That's, hey, that's just shipping in general, not just wine. But wine can be expensive to ship because it's kind of, it's it's heavy. You know, on a, on a per unit basis it's a fairly heavy product a case of wine is anywhere from about 35 ish to 50 pounds including the box <clears throat> so it's a good wine i think you should try it if you like you like rosé especially american rosé i think you should try it all right see <clears throat> i told you i'm not i'm i told you i'm not gonna hate on the wine well hey if it was a bad wine, i would have told you it was a bad wine i would have told you it sucked Though I don't usually use those words very often anymore. I'll just say it's not my style. And that doesn't mean it sucks. It's just sometimes it's just not my style. I'm excited to drink more of this at some point and the other two bottles. All right. That's going to do it for this episode. I'll have links below in the description for Empathy Wines and, of course, all the stuff that I use on a regular basis for the show. If you want to help support the show, the best way to support the show is subscribe. Tell your friends about it. Click the like button if you like it. And then if you want to buy some equipment, if you're into like video stuff, there's I got some affiliate links down there. I got a PayPal donation thing. If you want to send some ducats my way, I get it. COVID and all the craziness going on. You don't have an extra spare, you know, five, ten, two dollars. I totally get it because I don't necessarily have a spare five, ten, fifteen, twenty bucks either um, to give somebody for putting out content. So, but if you do, I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.